Yeah, baby, all the guardians of the galaxy, how I'm disappointed in you. All the guardians of the honey, how I wish that this wasn't true. How? What's up, guys? This is the Gospel According to Mark with a C. He is I and I am he. Just taking some time to tell you what's on my mind. And um, what can I say? I've been following this whole Guardians of the Galaxy kerfuffle and uh, all of the support and the outpouring is just so touching for James Gunn who tweeted a bunch of pedophilic tweets and passed it off as humor, as jokes and everybody is going for it this is his his right to free speech and everybody has no ulterior motives whatsoever no one is selfish in their support of james gunn no it's all about protecting the right of the american to make a joke blue humor i believe some of you called it um well i already did a video on this so you guys know where i stand um but you know in the days that have passed we've seen the entire cast you know, the principal cast of Guardians of the Galaxy come out to uh, support James uh, Gunn, you know, including uh, Chris Pratt, um, what's her name, Zoe Zaldana, uh, Bradley Cooper, and of course, Dave Bautista, Dave ba ba Bautista, Dave Bautista, and uh, Dave Bautista said that he is nauseated to have to work for a company that bows down to the will of people who are uh, trying to set this man up, you know, and, uh, you know, use their political agendas, you know, to bring him down and everything like that. Or well, they even got uh, Kurt Russell in the act. You know, Kurt Russell recently came out to, um, you know, to be a character witness for uh, James Gunn and tell the world that he backs him and everything. And, um, you know, that's a little bit that's a little bit complicated for me because I have always been an admirer of um, Kurt Russell's, you know, uh, just about everything I've seen him in, I've enjoyed him in it. So I have no disrespect uh, whatsoever to Kurt Russell. I uh, respectfully disagree with what he's saying. I mean, look, guys, James Gunn could very well be a wonderful human being, you know, like just a great guy to work with, you know, a nice guy and everything. That's really not even the issue. You know what I mean? Um, there are plenty of people out here with issues who are nice people, you know? So, um, I, you know what I think? I think that a lot of people are unclear with the definition of pedophilia and, and a pedophile and things like that. So, um, you know, I'm going to read to you guys the um, a couple of the definitions, you know, for pedophilia, for pedophile. All right, now... Um, Pedophilia, and this is in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, is defined in part sexual perversion in which children are the preferred sexual object, specifically a psychiatric disorder in which an adult has sexual fantasies, sexual fantasies, sexual fantasies about or, not and, but or engages in sexual acts with a prepubescent child. Okay, it's sexual perversion in which children are the preferred sexual object, specifically a psychiatric disorder in which an adult has sexual fantasies about or engages in sexual acts with a prepubescent child. Now, what I want you guys to take away from that is that a pedophile does not have to engage in sexual acts with a prepubescent child to be a pedophile. You know, so for everyone out there who keeps saying, well, there's no proof that, that he had sex with a child. There's no proof that he abused a child. That's not what a pedophile is exclusively, okay? If you read the man's tweets, I don't care if they were 85 years ago, all right? It speaks to a certain thing inside of a person's character that they are fantasizing about sexual acts with a child, okay? It's cut and dry. That's what the man was doing. It was just a joke, you say. Okay, well, you have to look at why a person would make such a joke. 
all right? This is not an average kind of joke. Picture yourself, I mean, all of us, everyone who's talked about this story can agree that they were bad jokes, okay? But now, take a step further and think about what it takes to make such a joke, what it takes to think and conceive of such a joke. It goes further than just saying, oh, I just wanted to shock people. You know, if you wanted to shock people, I could say, oh, I shit my pants, okay? But you specifically went to sexual acts with a child again and again and again. That, my friends, is an indication of pedophilia, okay? It's a symptom of pedophilia. It's just that simple. It's not about me trying to judge. It's not about me trying to virtue signal. That's just what it is. I read the, de the definition for you, okay? Now, I will go further. And we're going to go down to pedophilia in the Wikipedia. And I'm going to have to do this fast because I'm losing a charge on my phone. Uh-oh. And my son uh, took my charger. He left me with this one. It doesn't work. Okay, so uh, anyway. Thanks, boy. Love you. Pedophilia. <laughs> it's, 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 I, that's horrible. All right. Um, pedophilia is a psychiatric disorder. And this is on Wikipedia. You can read it for yourself, guys. It's not just me. Pedophilia is a psychiatric disorder in which an adult or older adolescent experiences a primary or exclusive sexual attraction to pu prepubescent children. Although girls typically begin the process of puberty at 10 or 11 and boys at age 11 or 12, criteria for pedophilia extend the cutoff point for prepubescent to age 13. A person who is diagnosed with pedophilia must be at least 16 years old and at least five years older than the prepubescent child for the attraction to be diagnosed as pedophilia. Pedophilia is uh, termed pedophilic disorder in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, and the manual defines it as paraphilia involving intense and recurring, recurrent sexual urges towards and fantasies about prepubescent children, fantasies about prepubescent children that have either been acted upon or which cause the person with the attraction distress or interpersonal difficulty. Distress, such as getting fired, loss of a job. The International Classification of Diseases defines it as a sustained, focused, and intense pattern of sexual arousal as manifested by persistent sexual thoughts, fantasies, urges, or behaviors involving prepubertal children. All right. Um, I don't know if I should try to read the rest of this because I know it's going to cut off. Uh, in popular usage, the word pedophilia is often applied to any sexual interest in children or the act of child sexual abuse. This use conflates the sexual attraction to prepubescent children with the act of child sexual abuse and fails to distinguish between attraction to prepubescent or pubescent or postpubescent minors. Researchers recommend that these imprecise uses be avoided because although people who commit child sexual abuse are sometimes pedophiles, child sexual abuse offenders are not pedophiles unless they have a primary or exclusive sexual interest in prepubescent children. And some pedophiles do not molest children. Some pedophiles do not molest children. Okay? So, let's just stop with the defense of James Gunn by saying there's been no proof that he's done anything to children okay we're judging the words okay that's what we're looking at we're looking at the consistency of his words which led to him being fired okay this negatively impacted his life now this is something to worry about okay now I would say to Dave Bautista and um, what's his name uh, Kurt Russell and the entire cast of uh, Guardians of the Galaxy and everybody else who wants to defend this man, if you really gave a damn about James Gunn, you would be helping him to seek therapy. Yes, seek therapy. The same way he told the Star Wars fans to do, he should do it to him for himself. Seek therapy and try to get to the bottom of why he felt that it was funny to put these, these, these uh, sick fantasies into the, uh, into the atmosphere, into the internet. You know what I mean? If you really care about him, Dave Bautista, this is what you would be doing. All right? You wouldn't be nauseated by what happened to him. You might be nauseated by the implications of his words, and you might care about him to the point where you would offer him help. You know? Um, 
Look, I'm going to share something with you guys. I don't want it to go on too long in uh, the video. But um, a while back, you know, in my life, I actually knew someone who uh, was outed as being, um, as engaging in uh, pedophilic behavior. It was a very, very close friend of the family. And uh, this is someone who was a nice guy. You know, he always, uh, you know, treated me great. You know, he's a good friend of mine and everything. And, um, you know, I had a lot of respect for him. And when it turned out that he had, um, he had been touching another uh, family member or family friend um, inappropriately, a child, uh, at first he tried to deny it, and then uh, he admitted what he did. And it was a very, very trying time, you know, for our circle of friends and family. You know, it was very uh, polarizing, you would imagine, you know, where this guy had a long history of being there for people and, you know, being a good guy and, you know, everybody, you know, thought he was a stand-up person. So there was this, this uh, sense of, do you turn your back on him and shun him, which most people would do because it's a, it's a disgusting thing to do, you know what I mean? But I remember... Uh, sitting down with him because it's really not that easy to remove somebody from a family you know what I mean or remove somebody from a, a circle of friends and uh, and it was rough because you care about the victim you know of this and you want to uh, support them and protect them and you definitely want to support what it is that they want to do you know if they want to press charges or something like that then you have no choice it's like you have to back that that person has had something horrible happen to them you know, and, um, but even that person, you know, wasn't sure which way to go. You know, she didn't know, you know, how far to take it. And it was rough. You know, it was a very, very rough time for the family. But I remember sitting down with this guy and talking to him, you know, and I'm like, did you, did you do this? You know what I mean? And he was like, uh, after a while, he was like, yeah, uh, but it was just once, which is, you know what I mean? With, with, pedof with pedophiles, it's like, there's never just once, you know? Um, it's a sickness, it's an illness, and I didn't realize how much of an illness it was until I actually sat down and talked to him. You know, we, we were actually speaking to each other, you know, like face to face, and um, this guy told me, and I'll never forget it, he said, um, you don't know what it's like when you go into a store, you know, a department store, and you just happen to go past the uh, children's clothes section, and he said there's uh, pictures, there's posters up of children, little girls and boys in their underwear. And he told me that um, this actually puts a lot of pressure on him. You know what I mean? Like it's just too much. It's everywhere, he says. You know, you turn on the TV, you know, toddlers and tiaras and stuff like that. And for the first time in my life, I realized this is a real sickness. It's like, it, it's, a, it's a real compulsion. It's like, this is something that there are certain people in our society have to live with, you know what I mean? And to demonize the people and just like totally say, okay, you're the devil and you deserve to die, you know, it, um, it's not that easy, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that you should have sympathy necessarily for people who, uh, you know, violate children, no. What I'm saying is that if we're going to understand this, then sometimes we have to be willing to help people who are sick. You know what I mean? But you have to be able to identify it. You have to be able to identify the symptoms, you know, and the things that cause them to do the things and to feel the way that they do and things like that. And um, I remember saying to my friend, uh, you know, at the time, listen, um, you're about to completely ruin your life. You know, it's like he was married and everything. And um, I was like, I will go to counseling with you. You know, this was a family friend. That, mean, that meant that his wife was a friend. That meant that the uh, girl who had been violated was a friend. It was a very, very tough time, you know, for all of us. And um, I told him, I will go with you. You know, I, I'm not going to abandon you. I'll go with you, you know, for counseling. But I tell you, if she wants to press charges, you have to accept it. You know what I mean? It's like if your wife wants to leave you, you have to accept it. You know, there's not much you can do, you know, at, at this point, you know. But um, this man actually committed an act, you know. So, you know, that's why I say it's just, it seems so disingenuous. 
you know, when I see these people in their outpouring, you know, for James Gunn and stuff like that. It's like, why are you, are you not helping this man, or at least questioning why he would make a joke out of such a serious thing? You know, and that's what my first video was about when I was doing all that ranting and raving and cussing, you know, and, you know, and all that stuff. I understand I was a little bit passionate there, but this is something that means a lot, you know? So it's like, it's not enough to say that James Gunn is a good guy. It's like a lot of predators are good guys, you know, or good people. That's why they're effective predators, because they know how to present themselves, you know. But if you're really a friend, Dave Bautista and Kurt Russell and everybody else, you know, who's uh, coming out to support this man, then you don't have to do it for the world to see. But I should hope that maybe somehow behind the scenes, you're talking to your so-called friend and helping him to try to understand why he thought this was funny to begin with, okay? Because you're in an industry that is said to be rotten with pedophilia. You know what I'm saying? So there's so much context here. There's so much uh, to take into consideration. You know, so this is all I'm talking about. I'm not impressed with everybody who's coming out who's attached to uh, James Gunn because quite frankly, all of these people are getting paid with James Gunn. Look, I just watched uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one. I just watched it with my son uh, last night, you know, and uh, uh, yesterday afternoon, you know, and um, it, we enjoyed it. It's a good movie. James Gunn is a talented filmmaker. He's a talented director. It's tragic that this is happening. I, and I'm not even talking about the political motivation behind whoever outed him or whatever the case may be. I don't get into that aspect of things if you guys haven't noticed, okay? So for the people who came into the comment section calling me a fascist and stuff like that, look, please, okay? No, you're in the wrong place for that. It's like the only thing I'm talking about is the nature of Hollywood and what was it inside of this man that made him feel safe to say the things that he said. I'm just trying to understand. And hopefully those people around him, if they truly are friends, like they say they are, and they say that he's a nice guy, then you might want to help your nice guy friend. That's all I'm saying. And we should all try to do that. You know what I mean? If we, if we recognize anything like that in each other, we should try to be um, <clears throat> as uh, supportive you know, of that person and understanding. Um, you don't want to understand a pedophile. I understand that, but what I'm saying is, it. My experience has shown me that it's a true illness. It's a true compulsion. It's a mental disorder that needs greater understanding so that maybe we can save some children. You know, we can stop some children from being abused. That's got to be the bottom line. All right, so it's not just a matter of, oh, let's have sympathy, you know, for the, uh, you know, for the pedophile or whatever. This is about hopefully saving some children, saving some lives in the future. Okay, so um, those are my thoughts on the matter. You know, um, the whole Guardians of the Galaxy thing, it's, it's a tragic situation, guys. But, uh, you know, I stand by what I initially said. I believe that it was um, appropriate, you know, that he be uh, terminated, you know, from that project. And make no mistake about it, he will be fine in Hollywood. You know, James Gunn will be fine. He'll be hired again somewhere else. There's already talk about him going over to the DCU. So, um, <clears throat> you know, we'll see what happens, guys. But um, that would be my sincere thought. All these people who are offering all this public outcry of support for James Gunn, hopefully somebody, possibly behind the scenes, is trying to get this man to understand exactly what made him find this funny in the first place. Because uh, I just read you the definition, guys. That's, uh, that's troubling. All right, guys, so I've said enough about that. And uh, as usual, I want to thank everybody for your subscriptions. I want to thank you for your likes, for your comments, for your shares. You know, thank you guys so much. You know, I can't upload as much as uh, I like to these days because, quite honestly, my job is, like, blowing up with the overtime. And I'm just like a hawk, man. It's like, you know, that child support ain't going to pay itself. So I'm, I'm going for it. It's like if that money's on the table, I'm like, ah, ah. I'm swooping down. I'm getting that joint, man. I'm making that paper. Make it rain, baby. <laughs> you notice there's nothing coming down. You know what I'm saying? A brother is not rich. So uh, anyway, um, I will see you guys on the next one. This is the Gospel According to Mark with a C. Rock on.